Hey everybody, it's Mr. Pyers. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, drawing angles and getting proportions right uh, when you're drawing from life or drawing off the top of your head. Um, proportions are proportions are getting things like the right size. So for example, if I was drawing um, a cylinder like you guys are today, and I draw one, I draw my first one. And it feels really good to me. Like I hold it up to me myself and I look at it and the shape feels correct. I'm going to use that as my base um, object uh, to compare other things to. So in this cylinder in particular, I have another cylinder teetering on top of it and it's the same size cylinder. So what I can do is I can look at the height of this, even the width of this, and I can use that as a guide to how big my other cylinder needs to be. So for example, this is about this tall. Well, the bottom of my cylinder teetering on this starts here, and it's about that tall, and I'm actually going to use my fingers to guide me, and I'm going to see that my fingers went to about, that's the width, and that's like the height of it. Another way I can do it is I can take my pencil, go to the e top edge of the cylinder, and then pinch at the bottom edge, and I, that's like the distance from there to there. I can actually go there and transfer that. You see artists do that all the time. What I could also do is see the width, okay? Um, I'm going to, I think that my cylinder up here is about, this is the extreme left side of the cylinder. Well, since I have that, I can now, again, calculate the distance of there, and I can make a mark on the same type of width. So when I draw my cylinder up here, I have a really good uh, measurement now for my height of it and my placement of it. All I got to do is get these angles right of the ellipses for my cylinder, and there I go. I get two cylinders that are the same size, and that feels more accurate to me. A couple things about drawing in space. Um, objects closer are larger. They appear larger because they're closer to a person. Objects that go further away appear smaller. So the same cylinder that is in the background here has to be, if it's back here, has to be smaller than how these appear. So I have another cylinder kind of overlapped by these two, and so I'm going to use these two to guide how big it should be. So I can see that the top of my cylinder is um, roughly right here, and the bottom of it looks to be halfway up this cylinder because it's back more. Objects get um, higher up when they get back more too. So that guide will help me, help signal to me if I'm in the right place. So again, I'm going to draw my cylinder here. So here's a cylinder that would be behind these two. Yes, it's the same size cylinder in reality, but because of space, it's a little shorter. That's why if like someone's walking down the street, you can take your fingers and kind of pretend to squeeze their head because even though their head's the same size as yours, when they're from a distance, things appear smaller. I also have like the cap to one of these like little uh, photo containers and, that, and these little cylinders. I can now know that, oh, it kind of comes through this cylinder here and ends at that one there. So it's going to help guide me again where things should be. And as I draw, I modify. Like say I drew this, but like I, later on I noticed that, oh man, did it was it not the right size after all so you want to constantly like be checking your work because if you have to modify something um you got to do it you know like and if you're uh, what i mean by that is if you have to fix something fix it don't just leave it there um as i work into the other objects um in my still life here i can keep using these original drawings i did here as the guides for the next stuff because I can look at distances between things, how far apart something is. For example, I have a cylinder that kind of is about this far apart here. It's about this, this much lower than the cylinder here. And those couple little marks guide me on knowing where that cylinder should exist. Angles. Angles are important. We see that the, this angle is vertical. We also see that these angles are horizontal. Well, what if something's diagonal, right? You have lines that are vertical, lines that are horizontal. 
Well, diagonal lines can be all sorts of angles, from very acute, right, from very steep to very shallow. What I like to do is I like to hold my pencil and kind of match it with the angle in the photograph or of the object in front of me, and then try to translate that to my paper. Um, I, what, I, what I'm doing here now is I'm saying, okay, my cylinder ends here, and it's roughly ends about there. And that'll help me calculate the angle of this cylinder I'm dealing with right here. And if I have an angle here for a cylinder, it's got to be matched up here. Uh, just like cubes, you have a lot of parallels. Not all your objects are like that, but a lot are. Um, then I have another cylinder coming here. So again, I'm going to see like where the back end of the cylinder exists and where the front end is. Um, I can I, I can see like where the height of my cylinder should be if, if I basically I can compare like okay, well my cylinder, the top of my cylinder here, because I have a cylinder that's coming out like this. Let me just show you. I have a cylinder that's coming out like this, kind of flaring out at us. And the front, the opening of the cylinder, I have to calculate where it is. Well, the top of it, if I drew like an imaginary straight line across it, would it touch this part of the that cylinder? And I'm double checking that in my photo right now, and it looks like it does. So I know that I'm happy there. And then the bottom, how much lower is it than this? I'm kind of looking, and it looks like it drops a little lower than what I originally thought. Here's an announcement. Please excuse the interruption. Okay. If your last name now I can draw my ellipse. A, please head to the auditorium for your photos. Thank you. I can kind of start to draw my ellipse there. And I can make my modifications later, like based on my angles and stuff. But I'm always, like, adjusting my sketches. Um, in terms of um, finishing this up, I'm just going to add these last few objects kind of funny sometimes you can draw cylinders just as rectangles and then you can mod them you can modify them with the ellipses to give them some dimension you know shading and stuff is shading and de at detail work is it's what's, what's going to kind of finish this off but a good line sketch um, is where we need to get with any drawing even a good painting there's my back back edge of my table there for my surface, I can actually draw a line through there so it's a nice clean line, and then I can always come back after I review and say, okay, I don't need that anymore. Cool. Uh, just a quick thing on shading. Uh, just a quick thing on shading is if you have an object that's open like a tunnel, a way to shade something that's open, I saw this on a lot of students' drawings of cups. Um, you know, if I want to make this look 3D, I don't just fill it in with shadow because that doesn't look like as 3D as it could if it's open. I take a look at this back curve of this open form, and I'm actually going to shade mimicking that. And as I come out, I kind of lighten out. And what that's going to help produce is that illusion of, be, of, of it being open and shadow getting darker and darker as it goes inside that cave-like space. Okay? That's different than just shading like this as a drop shadow off of an object. Okay, we have to go with the curve that is suggested there to imply that sense of three dimensionality. Um, as I work throughout my sketches here, and I'm just using the 2B today, is I'm just building where my shadows do exist lightly and then I can come in later um, to build up my values. But you'll notice that when I put in shadow and build my values, objects separate themselves from one another, which adds to the illusion of three-dimensionality. I always look when I'm shading to see what is the highlight and then everything else definitely needs a coat, and then we can push push our values.
from there to more darker tones and This one seems to have a little bit of a glare in the middle, so this object is shaded from both sides. And then I would come back and I'd probably step it up to a 2B right now, and then a 4B later. Got a really strong shadow emanating here. That's going to help separate the form there. Same thing here. This has a drop shadow on that, so you got this kind of shadow coming down through there, on there. This shoots a shadow back. So again, I'm just game planning all my shading in their respective areas on this sketch. So I have a really good plan and it feels right to me. And I, if I have to modify anything, this is a great time to do it. Um, for example, if I accidentally kind of drew this cylinder too thin at first, right now as I'm sketching, I, I, you know, our eyes are great at like observing. So like step back you know hold your drawing up and double check it before you go full out because if you have to make adjustments it's easier to do it now than it is later when you've like almost finished the piece again good value transitions start to separate objects and all that um, this is a great exercise to do and you'll get there um, getting your angles right it just takes it just takes time, it takes some patience, and takes practice to um, get all that right. But it'll pay off in the end um, for all of you. That's why you got to keep drawing, keep practicing, keep, and that'll help you keep improving. If you're stale with it, it's just going to take a little longer for you to really move forward and get where you want to be as an artist. Every artist does this stuff. Doesn't matter if you're accomplished and you've you figured this stuff out a long time ago. This is always good practice for every artist just to build, build, build. And practice and, and just know that you're honing your craft or not getting lazy. Okay everybody, good luck.